handles 45 just fine and I would say we've not had a single problem with reliability, have we? As far nope. as actually cycling the rounds go. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Tennessee, baby. What's <laughs> so up, guys? This is Jake from TN Tactical coming at you with another video. And today, I have a special treat with me today is my good friend Graham here, and he has asked for us to do a quick first shot review of uh, a handgun he's got. Now, at first I wasn't so sure if I wanted to do it because honestly today, I don't know when you're watching this, but it's basically New Year's Eve and I'm feeling kind of ratchet right now. I feel like I might be getting under the weather. I'm feeling just really like downtrodden. But then when you told me the handgun that we were going to be reviewing today, I thought this was the perfect match for me. What we got today? A high point JHP 45. A high point JHP 45. I'm feeling ratchet today, so I thought this would be the perfect handgun yep. for me to review. Now, in all seriousness, the high point 45, you know, it gets a lot of flack, and there's some good reason for it. That it's basically a giant brick, which, it is. which by the way, let me show clear here. Empty mag. I have not, have I pointed at nope. you? I have not pointed at you. Okay, good. Because people love to say I point guns at people. We are clear, empty. Okay. I can't. Yep, there we go. The high point, JHP 45. Chamber 45 caliber. It is a significantly weighted brick. You've seen videos, I'm sure, before about it. This thing, I've never actually held one before until today. This thing is freaking huge. When he first handed it to me, I was like, oh my God, because it really does feel like it's way off balance and everything. By default, the grip on this, he says, kind of slick. Very slick. So you put this rubber hogue yeah. kind of grip wrap around it to kind of give you a little bit more, yeah. I guess, <clears throat> yeah, it's friction to it there. Pretty necessary for and so you don't slap yourself in the face. And you said the trigger was kind of sticky. It's, it's very sticky. And what was it like before? Because you did something to it. What did you do? I forgot. I took, the, I took the magazine disconnect out in an attempt to free the trigger up a little bit. It seems to have freed it up some. One more thing you'll see there is white lettering here. It normally doesn't come like that. I think Graham did that as yeah. practice. In case he made a mistake, he didn't want to accidentally do it on the Glock or something where it would be hard to fix. But I think you did a good job with that, by the way. We got some serrations here in the back, no front serrations. These are kind of just like part of the casting of the slide. It doesn't really feel like, you can't really, you can't really grip those. They're not really machined in there. They're more just like part of the mold of when they actually make the slide in the factory. They literally just poured metal into a mold and just, that was it. The, the only part they machine is the very backside underneath inside, right? Yeah, just yeah. Like in fact, if you look carefully, I don't know if you notice this, but you can see like the machining yep. texture. Um, very rough. Very rough on the barrel inside here, just right where it comes out through the ejection port. You can see it. And I mean, now, now in, you know, in higher quality guns, they would say that that is there to allow debris right. to freely escape. Right. But <laughs> that's not the case with this one. So we're going to go give this a shot real quick and we'll see how it does. I'm very excited to shoot it. All right, I'm going to try to just do a mag dump, nine rounds. Um, I was doing a little bit of research prior to making this video because I wanted to come into this knowing a little bit something about this rather than just say, oh my gosh, it's heavy, it's a brick, whatever. The sights are off. Are they? Yeah. So here's the thing about High Point. It's, you know, it gets a bad rap, obviously. I mean, it's a very clunky, large, oversized gun. Their 9 millimeter is about the same size as this one, so is their 380, and this is the 45. It is just humongous. It feels very cheap, and that's because it is cheap. You can get one of these MSRP $190. I think you got this for $150, you said? So it's really not the kind of thing that you're necessarily going to show off at the range necessarily or ever use it for competition. Where did that hit? I saw something move. This is a gun made by a company whose sole purpose is to make firearms as cheap as possible 
for people when they actually need one. What I mean is you're not going to see a lot of customization options with this. We'll get into that in a second of how it's built. But the thing is, my understanding from High Point is they want it so that if you're in a situation at the last minute and you need a handgun, they want to give you an inexpensive option so that you can go out to a gun store and get one that day, you know, provided there's not a waiting period, but you can get one immediately at an affordable price. So at $190, you're not going to see a bunch of bells and whistles on this. You're going to see that there is a lot of like factory machining marks and stuff. The entire system, so the barrel itself, again, have I pointed this at you? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I just want to clarify because people think I point guns at people. The barrel itself, you know, typically on like a Glock or Smith & Wesson or any other pistol, you see it's got kind of like a hinged barrel where it actually comes up. Normally the barrel comes up, but this is a fixed barrel system. It's completely blowback operated, meaning that the barrel and the frame is one piece and it's just a slide itself that comes back. So it operates a little bit differently than a typical pistol like a Glock or a Smith & Wesson. Shooting high. You were right. This thing is like really off. Yeah. So we need to make some adjustments on this. That being said, because it's so different, it's really, really hard to find any kind of customization options. For example, you're not gonna be able to get like a thread barrel for this because to be quite honest, the barrel is part of the frame. You cannot remove it. You cannot put any threading on that because of that. You're not gonna have like a smooth trigger. It's got like a very, very stiff trigger. I would say it's probably about five or six pounds. All right, so we're gonna do like we always do. We're gonna kind of simulate the trigger pull so you can kind of see what you're dealing with. With high points, typically, normally, you have to put the mag in. However, since Graham took the disconnect out, we don't necessarily have to do that. So we're pulling, pulling stiff, stiff, just released. Still no trigger pull yet. Not yet, right there. And then if I reset real quick here, watch. Just then we got a reset. So I'll pull again, not the wall yet, right there. One more time. And as I'm pulling it back, I'm feeling the trigger go further back in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the trigger back until I feel it reset. Right there, right there. Now the trigger's ready to go again. I pulled it, still nothing. I'm all the way near the back, back here. Right there is where it releases the striker. It's got an actually like a proprietary rail system here. That's, it, that's, that's proprietary. Yeah, and you're not gonna be able to actually like fit no. most of your lights or anything like that on a high point, unfortunately. So it's a little bit off right now. Uh, we got a little flathead screw right here that we need to tighten down just a little bit to make it a little bit more accurate. Once we do that, we should be all right. So mag number two, here we go. I actually had to hit the back of it to get the slide to go back. Yeah. All right, let's try it out here. It's just a massive gun. It's just, it's made to just be used, I think probably for self-defense and just be like gotten rid of, thrown away. I hate to say it, but it's kind of like a throwaway gun, right? You know what I mean? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But here's some things that you need to think about that are positive, okay? Because there are some positive things about this. Number one, obviously the price. It's very cheap. $109 for the 45 ACP model. It's very cheap. There you go. Number two, it's made in the USA. Did you know that? It's 100% made in the USA. Number three, it has a lifetime warranty. You can be the seventh owner of this and you'll still get a complete warranty on it yep. by the company. There you go. I would like a gun with a trigger that's not so sticky. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's sort of hard to shoot with such a sticky trigger. Do you think taking that disconnect out maybe impacted it or? Maybe, I might put it back in and see if that fixes it, but I doubt it, it was pretty sticky beforehand. Yeah. But 
um, it's not bad for 150 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Number four is going to be reliability. The thing about this high point of how much crap it gets, my understanding is it is extremely reliable. People rarely have issues with cycling around through it. I haven't ever had any issues. Part of that is because of where it is a blowback system. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? There's less moving parts inside the actual handgun itself. Therefore, there's less room for error when operating it. And then number five is that it is a company that who has a sole aim mission to just make sure that anyone can buy a handgun at a last minute's notice if they absolutely need one at a very cheap price. You're not really paying for looks when you get a high point. You're really paying for just something that's going to function for what you need it to do. I found my aim there eventually. Took a little bit of time. I like it, man. I like it. I mean, if you're in a situation where you really like... <laughs> You don't know what else to do. Just grab this, man, and just dump it on someone. Um, is it going to be good for accuracy? Mm, I don't really know. Probably not. You know, we have to really adjust this back sight and raise up quite a bit. It's very, it's a very ingenious way of of doing the elevation. You just tighten or loosen the screw, and this piece of plastic is flexible enough to kind of just follow along with the screw, hopefully. And that's how we adjust it for the elevation. It's fun. You know, like for $190, a 45, I mean, I don't know what you can really expect from it. I am happy that it's reliable. Overall, it's not a bad deal. I think it's not a terrible gun. If this was like a $500 gun or a $400 gun, I'd say absolutely not. But this is under $200. You know what you're getting into. You've got a lifetime warranty. I know people like to knock on high point, but overall, I'm, this being the first time I fired one, I think it's great. I think everybody should probably have one of these just to keep around in case, I don't know, you put the dots together. You'll figure it out. Guys, if you've enjoyed this kind of content, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Do you have a high point? What do you think? I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for subscribing, and we hope to bring you more good things soon. <laughs>